According to University of Nebraska Lincoln NEB guide, all plants contain some nitrates. Forages grown in stress conditions can contain excessively high amounts of nitrates. Bacteria in the rumen of cattle can convert nitrates into a nitrite and ultimately an ammonia, which can be fatal. Mary Jernowski, a Nebraska Extension Beef Systems Specialist, notes that cool growing conditions in early spring can increase the likelihood of forages accumulating excessive amounts of nitrates. We spoke with Mary on Monday to learn more about nitrate toxicity in cattle production. Essentially, when we have uh, cattle or any ruminant that's consuming a high nitrate feedstuff, um, the nitrate itself actually isn't toxic to them, but there's bacteria in the rumen that take that nitrate and they reduce it to nitrite, and that's what's toxic because if nitrite accumulates in the rumen and gets absorbed into the bloodstream, it actually binds with hemoglobin, which is circulating in your blood and helps carry oxygen. Well, it binds to that hemoglobin and causes it not to be able to carry oxygen. So essentially, uh, nitrate toxicity is actually a form of hypoxia or cattle essentially suffocate um, because they can't carry enough oxygen to their body and to their brain. So what we try to do when we're thinking about nitrate toxicity is how do we manage the intake of nitrate as well as the conversion of that nitrite, that toxic compound, to a less toxic compound like ammonia. And there are actually bacteria in the rumen that can do that for us as well. So we have to build up that population when we have really high nitrates in the feedstuff so that we actually don't get a buildup of nitrite. According to Mary, two symptoms that your cattle may show due to nitrate toxicity are high respiratory rates and exercise intolerance. In order to avoid these symptoms, it is important to understand what causes high nitrates in forages. The big thing that causes high nitrate is if we have a lot of nitrogen available and then we have growing conditions that are not favorable. So uh, the plant uptakes that nitrogen and it accumulates it as nitrate, uh, but it can't grow rapidly enough to use it up. And so it's kind of storing the nitrogen for when the conditions get right. So if we have dry conditions, uh, most people think about nitrates, they think about drought. So dry conditions, uh, cool conditions, cool growing conditions, uh, like uh, in the early spring or late fall can actually cause accumulation of nitrates. And then uh, the other big one that I think sometimes people don't think about is actually shade. So if we have a series of cloudy days, you'll actually see nitrate levels accumulate in plants because they'll still be taking up that nitrogen, but they won't be able to grow and utilize it as quickly as they're accumulating it. Weather conditions may impact the increase of nitrates, but there are also a few plant species that contain more nitrates than others. A lot of people on range may get nitrate toxicity because of weeds and actually cattle uh, selecting those weeds. But I would say for most producers, the biggest caution is actually annual forages. So pearl millet, um, sorghum sedan, any of the warm seasons, as well as the cool seasons like oats, uh, rye, any of those can actually accumulate nitrates. But one of the most interesting things with the uh, increase in popularity of cover crops has been brassicas. So turnips and radishes, rapeseed, those also accumulate nitrates. They're great nitrogen scavengers, which means they do a really good job of accumulating nitrates. And indeed, we just worked with Ward Labs to look at samples that producers had sent in of those species. And when we looked at all the fresh samples that were submitted, 40% of the brassicas actually um, were extremely high in nitrates, such that we would caution about the utilization of them for forage, and about 20% of those grass species. So there is some risk with using annual forages, but we have some ways we can mitigate that risk. In order to mitigate the risk of using annual forages, Mary refers to the saying, dilution is the solution for pollution. Just like diluting annual forage hay, there are ways to dilute grazing forages. One of the ways is actually to allow those cattle to be selective. And what I mean by that is lighter grazing pressure will actually allow those animals to eat the higher part of the plant, which is actually lower in nitrates than the lower part of the plant. And they can actually start working their way down and do some self-adaptation, meaning, remember I told you about those bacteria that can actually take the nitrite to ammonia? Well, they have to have nitrite available to grow and multiply and build up. So if we can slowly increase the amount of nitrate levels those animals are eating, they can actually self-adapt. 
so the other thing is we often tell people that feeding corn, for instance, can help with nitrate toxicity. And that's because the more energy that's available in the rumen, um, the more those bugs that take the nitrite to ammonia can actually do that because they actually do that so they can grow and multiply. They're using the ammonia as their protein source, so to speak. So one of the nice things is that with these annual forages, if they are uh, immature, uh, they are actually higher quality and they have more energy available. So some of the challenges are actually avoided because they're high uh, energy. And brassicas are one of those. They tend to be very, very digestible, very high energy. And so we've actually been doing some testing with producers out in their fields because we've seen some extremely high levels and yet we haven't seen a lot of incidences of toxicity. And so we're trying to figure out what should our guidelines be when we're grazing. I would say they're probably higher than our current recommendations, which are based off of hay feeding, uh, but we don't know how high we can go.